Hey everybody, welcome to Pencil for Life. I am the one, the only bread. How are you guys doing today? Uh, I hope you're doing well. Uh, I am joined today uh, by uh, a very talented artist, Jeremy Clark. How are you doing, Jeremy? I'm doing great. I'm uh, happy to be here and hopefully can answer some of the pressing questions, hard-hitting questions that <laughs> I'm sure are going to be flowing through the pipeline here to me. Uh, today, well, so we'll, we'll have a few. Um, you know, uh, basically, uh, let's why don't you give me a little inner, let's give everybody a little introduction to who you are, real quick. So, um, how long you've been working in the industry for about five years? You said to me earlier, right? Is that correct? Yeah, I've been a pro now for about five years. And uh -huh. During that time, I've primarily done uh, cover ink slash finishing work uh, for a number of different publishers here in the comic book industry, some of which uh, you guys may very well be familiar with, like Lady Death, or I got to do a variant cover with my buddy Eric Henson for Mark Millar's uh, Prodigy series for Image. Yep, Prodigy um, was a good series, by the way. I like that. Yeah, one. that was that was uh, that was a highlight for sure. I mean, obviously he's really well known for kick ass and kingsman and helping out quality work so i had to jump on the opportunity when it rose but uh yeah lady death uh some group fairy tale stuff back in the day with uh, good buddy mike DeBalfo, um mm -hmm. and a lot of other really unique projects that have been coming through the pipeline pretty much all this year so i'm just happy to continually be putting out work and hopefully some of it is stuff that you guys enjoy yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, I definitely know, uh, you know, some of my local friends definitely enjoy your work uh, for sure, uh, especially the Xenoscope Zen stuff that you've done and definitely Lady Death, uh, Coffin Comic stuff. So, yeah, man. Uh, but, uh, you know, on your table right now, you're working on a piece for Daniel. Is that correct? Daniel Mendoza? Yeah, uh, yes. yeah you know, uh, of, of Zombie Tramp fame. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a connecting cover that I'm getting to ink uh, with pencils by Jose Varese out of Florida. Nice. And uh, it's my first time getting to work with him. And that has been a pretty fun uh, collaboration. We've got mm -hmm. a number of other ones uh, already locked in uh, through the pipeline through the rest of this year with Dan. And I'm really hoping that uh, you guys enjoy this sugar pop stuff right out of the gate because it's uh, it's a lot of fun. I might even yeah. I don't know if this camera's picking it up. Oh, let me. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, let me I, sorry, there's a. Oh, uh, there's, there's 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 some there's yep. some cannons. <clears throat> yeah, some cannons uh, there. Yeah, I might have to mature the stream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you might you might have to put some uh, and a, and a disclaimer <laughs> on there. Um, uh, <laughs> we're going live right now. But that's all right. Yeah, all yeah. The good thing is, this artwork and artwork uh, usually isn't gets doesn't get censored on. YouTube actually. So well, I, I figured if anybody was sleeping, the old shock and awe would have brought them back, right? <laughs> that's to, definitely a shock right, and awe, right yeah. there. So yeah, that's yeah. that's. I mean, that's what probably a lot of people are familiar with. Uh, <laughs> at least when I was inking uh, Mike DeBalfo on the the Zenoscope stuff, you know, yeah, there was the, yeah. There was the regular versions and then the Z-rated versions, and so mm -hmm. that, that that should be no stranger to that type of uh, that type of material. <laughs> yeah, in fact, uh, I'm going to bring up uh, some of your uh, sexy work right now and show it to the audience, you know, as we're as we're talking. But um, so uh, when you're inking, right? You know, when you get a lot, it's mainly what you're known for is inking right now. So yeah, um, I. That's, I'd say that's probably about 95% of my career. I do have a couple pencil credits here and there, and most recently, as of the last probably three or four covers that I've been doing, I've been actually doing all the layouts um, mm -hmm. first, and then uh, shooting them over to uh, Raymond Gay, who I've been working uh, exclusively with uh, as of late, uh, to do the final rendered pencils before it comes back to me to... Uh, try to enhance it even more in the traditional inking stage, which nice. is all I do. Because as you can see, I don't uh, actually do any digital. Um, it's all an old yeah, you're just and, yeah, by hand. Yeah, just brushes, ink yeah, wells. Do you use brush or pen and quill? Uh, both. Uh, okay. Usually, I, I rock the brush on any of my holding lines. Um, mm -hmm. You know, to really give some pop and energy to the to the outlines of the characters themselves and to make sure that the line weights 
are correct uh, in terms of separating the foreground, midground, and background elements yep. of the page. And, uh, you know, anything organic, uh, trees, grass, uh, fur, um, mm -hmm. anything that has an organic element to it, I like to utilize the brush for. But um, Yeah, because it gives a better flow when you're, when you're using a brush tip or... Or whatever to get that natural almost look. Yeah, it just doesn't look as mechanical, you mm -hmm. know. At the end of the day, you don't want uh, something that is uh, organic to seem like it was machine made. Correct. Um, yeah. So, in terms of like my cross hatching or feathering or any of the really precise, detailed, uh, really small line work, I'll switch over to a crook wheel or. Um, you know, even in some cases, just a really, really fine pit pen. Um, mm -hmm. If I have to get something really tiny that I can't pull off with a croak wheel. But when I was uh, inking a number of the Lady Death stuff that Mike uh, DeBalfo penciled. Um, Which I actually for, have one right now. Yeah, yeah. for, for his uh, work, I, I definitely utilized brush on uh, all the holding lines for him because it, He's got these really nice line weights and a really strong foundation to work off of. And so naturally you don't want to take away from that as, at all as an inker. And mm -hmm. um, those are just, you know, uh, a way to and make sure that you hold those original lines in, in a manner that doesn't distract or, or take away from what he, the penciler, was intending. Um, yeah. So and, when, you, when you get pencils in, uh, this leads me to a question because, um, you know, I, I pencil, I ink my own work, right? So I do my own inks uh, sure. on my own pencils. Um, I tip, typically do not pencil very tightly because I kind of know where I want to go with the inks. Sure. Uh, how do you, how, when you get your pencils in, do you expect to like really tight uh, from a, from an artist? Like mean, meaning like all the lines like super detailed and where you should be following along or... Or how do you expect the artwork to come in for an inker? Um, it, it, it's entirely dependent upon the penciler that I'm working with. Okay. Um, I know, for instance, since you're using uh, some of Mike's and uh, my collaborations as examples here, mm -hmm. he, he definitely pencils more tight than uh, some other pencilers that I've worked with over the years. Um, and it can range from uh, rather loose, uh, in some cases where I'm doing the, the actual finishing, uh, work in the inking stage, uh, okay. so that, you know, I'm essentially drawing in various aspects of it, uh, as I'm going along the inking, uh, that is not the case with, with Mike's work. He's rather, uh, you know, he knows where he wants things to be already well okay. in advance. And, and so it's my job to simply take that already really strong existing foundation and try to just even enhance it and embellish in a little bit more in a way that uh, may just clean up some of the, the line work a little bit so that it's all it got a real nice slick or smooth look to it um, or just adding little you know small fine details in terms of feathering or uh, you know texture effects here and there to mm -hmm. uh, give it a little bit more life, but for the most part, his work is already, um, you know, got a great foundation to work off of. And okay. what do you uh, I really enjoyed working with him. Great. Uh, what do you prefer when you get your pen, when you get pencils in for someone? Do you want to have that freedom where you can have fun and embellish some things, or do you, do you like it really tight where you know where you're going already and you don't have to really worry about it? Um, I would say uh, somewhere in between. Okay. Uh, there's always a great deal of fun to be had in uh, having some interpretation, you know, uh, to allow some of your own style to, to come in uh, to the piece. Uh, but I've always used the analogy in the past on, on certain Q&As and stuff that I've been on that, that shows that, um, you know, a penciler is kind of like... The, the foundation and the structure of a house. Like say mm -hmm. when a house is, house is being built, right? The, the, bones. The, the, the crew comes in, they lay that foundation. You can't build the house without the strong foundation. Then they put up the whole house all around and now you got a really nice structure, but it doesn't truly become a home until you start adding all the little knickknacks, furniture, 
things of that nature into the house. Well, I like to consider my job as an inker as like that interior decorator guy that's adding all those little extra features to really turn it into a home. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you, you know, translate that analogy into art, it's basically what's, what's taking it to the final rendered piece that you guys ultimately see in the, the printing of the comics themselves. Nice. Um, and, and that's, that's the best way I think that I can describe my job, you, you know, could you get away without having that guy come in and, and decorate things? Yes, but it would then be, you know, just structurally sound and it wouldn't really be the, the, the emotional element that you have to it at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think of his name. Um, he's an inker here in town. He inks for uh, Sal Valuto occasionally. And uh, I remember talking to him one time and he was telling me, uh, you know, it's all about the details in the background when you ink, you know. If you add those little details, those little those little things, it'll pull people in more. You know, even though word bubble might go over it or something like that at the end, uh, he's like, if you put those little details in, those little nuances, uh, it helps pull the page together. So. Yeah, and granted, you don't want to over render a piece. No. Um, because that that will detract from from the overall composition, but. Mm -hmm. I really pride myself on having really slick, clean uh, lines. And yeah, which we can see is, you know, some of the artwork. I mean, I don't and, see any mistakes whatsoever. <laughs> well, um, and, and, and that's the goal. Like, I want it to look really clean. Um, you know, I, I always make the joke that I'm a little too OCD. Uh, I can't have a crooked line because it's uh, <laughs> it ends up like I want to fix it if I see that there's uh, something out of the ordinary or not quite the way that, that I had intended it. Mm -hmm. And so um, in regards to, to that kind of stuff, I, I really find that it, even when there are clean pencils, there's still a way for me to, to push it to that next level mm -hmm. um, because of just adding those small little details that you were mentioning earlier that really help to take the piece just to the to the next level yeah so yeah, i i think you know like you know jim lee wouldn't be who he is today without scott williams helping him out you know and, oh no you know, and, and those two working in tandem create such sweet artwork it's amazing you know so uh, I, I agree i mean i got to see both of them when i was a uh, guest appearing at the, the fan expo dallas show earlier this year and okay. Um, By the way, Jim so, is a very small man, very small, and yeah. I, I'm a really big guy. I got to meet him here in Salt Lake not too long ago, and I felt like I almost knocked him over. Like he was just a tiny little man. <laughs> well, but but with with such big stature, you true. Know, um, and so yeah. not, not to take away anything there. No, no, not at all. I didn't mean it that way at all. Yeah, but yeah, uh, it, just it, physically, it, I was not expecting that when I met up. I was like, oh, yeah. Just, yeah. but, but it is really uh, interesting to see how how that transformation takes place between his pencils and then yeah. when Scott gets a hold of it to the inks because it it truly is like just uh, almost an entirely different piece of art when it's all mm -hmm. said and done. And um, I always wanted to you know get away or have people's mentality move from that whole chasing Amy reference um to look you know this, this is actually a whole other art form in itself to to really bring a whole composition together at the end of the day and um you know hopefully that has translated uh, through time as people have looked at my uh, my different pieces over the years mm -hmm. um now you do uh, a lot of shows when you go around uh uh, I see you posting all the time on Instagram feed, all the different conventions you go to. Um, and um, how, how how do I put it this way? When, you, when you're working on commissions and stuff like that, like, do you do them on the spot? Do you uh, require them to do beforehand? You know, so that way you can take time to ink it right? or or. Well, I will uh, say that when my commission list was open, mm -hmm. um, you know, I would take some definitely at the shows and uh, I would try to finish naturally all the ones that I took at an event. However, if, uh, you know, there was one or two that I couldn't get, you know, uh, completed, 
if the individuals didn't want, you know, a refund or still wanted it to be done, uh, it would end up becoming a take-home commission. And as a result, um, I don't do uh, too many commissions, uh, at least because when I was approaching it in that manner, I started to get a backlog of commissions. And you, nobody ever wants to wait, you know, a bajillion years for you to, to finish whatever it is that, that they were wanting and paid for at the time. That's and I, I completely understand that. And uh, yep. that is not lost upon me in any stretch of the imagination, um, which is why my commission list has been closed uh, for the better half of this year because I'm still getting caught up on past commissions. And okay. The reason for that uh, has been because of the massive influx of uh, published work that has kind of come through the pipeline. Mm -hmm. And I, I went from doing maybe one to two covers a month to now averaging four to five covers a month uh, over the last half a year. And um, just this month alone, I've already finished three. I'm about to wrap up the, the fourth that I just teased a little while ago. And okay. I still have another one I got to complete before I leave next week uh, to the other side of the pond in London, yeah. where uh, I'll be guest appearing uh, in Europe. And so, uh, naturally, the the published uh, cover work and other sorts of gigs from from the publishers take precedent. And so, I don't want to continue to bring on more commission work, knowing that it's going to end up. You know, being pushed back further and further and further because it's it's just not fair to yeah. the individuals that that are asking for that. And so uh, now it's my policy that uh, I'll take what I can at an event, and I'll even bring past commissions with me that still need to be finished uh, to with me to an event to work on. Um, and then whatever doesn't get uh, done, I just I simply refund and, and apologize. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, because I just know that I still have so many uh, that are in the wing that I need to get accomplished before yeah. I take on anything else. And I just think that that's the respectful thing to do for Dude, folks. That that's an awesome thing to do. Uh, you know, I know I've been overwhelmed. You know, at shows doing commission work and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, do that stand up. I like that a lot. It's a it's a good policy to have. So. Yeah, and I try, you know, to, to obviously uh, be as accommodating as possible when, when you are at a show. And uh, in the same vein, I, I do bring an entire portfolio full of original published covers or sequential pages and pinups uh, with me as well. So I always like to say uh, you can even get a better deal and perhaps a more affordable option for something that's published and fully rendered over a sketch um, if, if I can't accommodate in, in the other way thing that you're wanting and so i always try to, to provide multiple options for folks and i hope at the end of the day that they appreciate it because it's it's definitely um not lost upon me that i wouldn't be on that side of the table mm -hmm. if uh, if those guys weren't on on the opposite side and sure. so it's sure. something that uh, i think every artist or inker or colorist or writer uh should keep in, in the back of their head is that the reason why you were there is because there, there's other people there supporting you, and you gotta appreciate that support at the end of the day. You definitely have to. Uh, yeah, without without them, I wouldn't have a table. I wouldn't have some jobs. I wouldn't have commissions. I wouldn't have a comic. You know, you gotta appreciate that. You know, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, totally. Uh, when you're inking a page, this just came to mind. Uh, when you get your page in or cover, or whatever. How long does it take you to ink that cover on average? I know it very time will vary, you know. So, yeah, yeah, it re really depends on on the intricacies of mm -hmm. of the layout. Um, you know, if it's a standard, just you know, three quarter, you know, pinup, uh, for mm -hmm. instance, uh, you know, that's going to be significantly faster than say the ogre cover that i did uh, just recently i mean if you scroll down on my instagram a bit oh uh, yeah let me uh giant ogre uh kind of in this lord of the rings-esque setting um i mean that took me almost uh, three to five days i think to to do and it was because there was just so much going on in it um uh which one is it here? it's a little bit further down i think i'm following you on here it's uh 
There it is in color, but if you keep going, I'm trying to find the black and white and get past me and Brian Polito there throwing a board. Is this one right here? Yeah. Um, you know, there there was just a ton going on in that between yeah, all the little... Yeah, there's a ton of detail there. Yeah, between all the little soldiers that were, like, in the background, and I, I wish I had it up on my website in a more high-resolution format um, so that you could... Uh, people can go to Instagram if they want. But, uh, it's just Jeremy Clark Art, by the way, so... Uh, I will drop the link in the chat so they can go there as well. Yeah, and it's just uh, you know a cover like that that has a lot going on between the foreground, midground, and background elements will take obviously much longer than just a standard cheesecake style pinup. Yeah, um, and so I would say on average I spend two to three days on covers, um, and that's just to really make sure that the line work is. Um, you know, as good as I possibly can get it before it moves on to the next stage for color. Mm -hmm. And um, I think because it's the very first thing that you see on, you know, when you walk into any kind of uh, local comic book shop or, or, or store that has comics, it's, it's the covers that you're seeing that naturally true. draw it's you to true. it. Yeah. So I, as a result, want to invest as, you know, as much time as I feel is possible to ensure that it's, it's really gravitating towards you, the audience. And um, I mean, in terms of interiors, you want to average at least a page a day on yeah. in order to meet you know your monthly book deadline. But uh, for covers in particular, which is primarily what I do, um, I, I spend about on average two to three days on, on each one. Yeah, you want to take your time, make sure you got it right, super clean. Yeah. Well, and you don't you don't want it to be a disservice to the penciler either. No. You know, it's a, it's not only just a representation of you, but it's a representation of the team mm -hmm. as a whole. And there's no I in team, not to do the cliche, no, no. Uh, Dude, I, you know, phrase. But I I I appreciate everybody who I work with, and I, I definitely don't want them to have a, a bad feeling in, in, in their stomach uh, when they see something you know, come back, especially if they invested a lot of time in, in their portion of it. Um, just like I wouldn't want to see, you know, uh, somebody just, you know, kind of sleep through the colors uh, oh, on the opposite cool. side yeah. and then see that come back and be like, well, geez, I, you know, I spent so much time on the inks and then, it, you know, it doesn't look like you put in as much on, on the color side. Now, nobody wants that, you know, from yeah. either, either position. And so it's a unique place to be to be in the middle like that uh, mm -hmm. when you're when you're working with both sides dude i have to say uh your professionalism so far in, in talking about the way you work in your interview in the interview so far dude it's, it's top notch man uh um i really <laughs> appreciate that because i've run to a lot of people who you know uh are not like that at all you know and so just humbly, man, thank you for your professionalism, dude. I mean, that no, is awesome. I mean, I, yeah. I, again, um, I can't, I can't stress it enough how I, this is something that I, I wanted to do for a very long time, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a lot of guys uh, out there that are scraping and clawing away to get, you know, to, to either my position or, or, or greater. And I, never want to feel as if I'm not giving it a hundred percent. Um, it's, there's too many people involved between the publisher, the creative art team, whoever your editor is that mm -hmm. you, you don't want to ever have them feel like you're not truly invested in the project or in the yeah. book or, or in, in whatever it is that you're doing. And, um, I, I do really take it to heart to ensure that I'm doing everything in my power uh to to give them you know the kind of experience that that i would imagine they're looking for mm -hmm. and uh, you know if if that comes off as as being humble or uh you know the, a, a team player I, yeah. I i very much want that uh, because that's that's how i would hope that everybody is is approaching it um, yeah i just think that there's there's so many individuals now in, in this industry that are, are so cutthroat. Um, it, it's I, I see it on my feeds all the time yeah. in, in social media where 
you know, somebody is complaining about something this day or the next day, or how did that person do this, or, you know, somebody else do that, and I, I mean, let's be honest, guys, we're, we're just making superheroes, you know, um, sure. it's, it's not, it's, it's, it's not a life or death thing. We're we're, we're all in the not, same, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, we're on the same boat together. We're all you know paddling against the current <laughs> and and hoping that that the whole doggone thing doesn't just flip over one day. And you know, it's uh, it stinks to see that perhaps folks don't see it in that manner. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, I get it. It's competitive. People are all, we're all hunting for the, there's a limited, finite amount of jobs out there. And we're mm -hmm. all trying to get a piece of the pie, but. Yeah, customer pace is dwindling too. I mean, yeah, a um, going you, on. you know, but let's, let's build each other up. Yeah. Let's, uh, you know, try to, try to really help, uh, you know, people as opposed to, to tear them down. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I may not have been the best at that really early in my career because, um, you know, naturally your, your first inclination to when you're, when you're first trying to break in is to try to do whatever you can to get that okay. gig. Right. Um, however, you know, over the years and, and as I've experienced, you know, uh, have had more life experiences along the way, I, I look at things a little bit differently now. And I just hope that, um, you know, eventually everybody has that kind of light bulb moment that goes look you know let's let's just try to work together and, and create mm -hmm. some of the best uh you know artwork or comics that that the industry has seen in this yep. decade and and that's all you can really hope for i think at the end of the day yeah dude uh I, yeah i've seen on all sides creators customers all of it like dude honestly dude you, you were like a, a, a step above totally for sure man uh, in your approach and it's it's, I, I've been lucky to know several people like you who are in the industry. Chad Harding, a friend of mine, is the same way. The guy is tough. Chad's, Chad's a great guy. Yeah, yeah I, I got to do a, a panel with him. Um, God, it was had it been last year or some time. It was okay. uh, during a, a Wizard World event, and we were on a Q and A together. And he was going, you know, he brought his tablet up there and had the the, the tele screens you know kind of pulling up the work yeah. that he had been doing and he was going through it step by step trying to really almost like a, a, a teacher's approach yeah. to the crowd well, he did, and he did um, at the university out here so yeah, yeah. and uh you know that, that was very i mean heck i, w I was engrossed listening to it myself yeah. just to see if i see if there was something that i could you know add, add to the repertoire of, uh, of, of techniques that yeah. i was utilizing right. and, I think it's um, more than just techniques, though, because uh, he he was talking like the way you were about professionalism and what we're doing. And I was sitting down with him. We had a Mike Grell signing. They were doing it at my shop. And him and I are just in the corner talking. He's like, Brad, dude, at the end of the day, you don't got to listen to these people. It's just about doing your best and making superheroes and having fun at it. And if you can't do that, is it really worth it? You know? And he's like, don't don't listen to the BS that these guys are saying. Just focus on your craft, and you're gonna make it just fine. So, yeah, uh, I, I think as long as uh, you're putting in the work, you're putting mm -hmm. in the time, you're not being complacent about what it is that uh, that you're doing, and you have a good support system around you. Um, and that's kind of what it's about too. Uh, mm -hmm. Not to not to segue off, but uh, having the right people uh, around you. You know, trying to, to build you up uh, definitely it helps. You know, your your mindset and what you're thinking mentally, and and how mm -hmm. you're going about approaching certain things. Uh, you know, if you have that kind of toxic environment around you, it's gonna in turn probably have you become uh, more negative uh, overall. And um, it's totally true. You know, Lord knows at one point uh, again early in my career, I probably had a, a, a number of aspects of that, uh, yep. but it took, you know, it takes time and acknowledging kind of how uh, the process works and who the right people are that you should be surrounding yourself with that, uh, that really helps change that focus. And, yeah. and uh, I've been learning that very quickly over this last year since I started my book, like, uh, 
you know, who to have around me, who I should have around me, why they should be around me, you know, not, uh, not just, you know, being sucked into certain aspects of certain people, you know, or whatever, but totally it, who you have around you is definitely how, you know, I think it uh, shows more who you are, you know, um, it, uh, Makes you a better artist, a better person, a better friend. So, yeah. I, you know, I think so. I've, I've had so many wonderful experiences with industry pros over the years who mm -hmm. I've, I've met along the way on this journey uh, called comics that, um, you know, you, you want to take all those really positive experiences and uh, ensure that those are the ones that, that leave a lasting impression. Um, and for whatever negative ones come floating along the pipeline you just get to learn and to let those go and uh remember what it was that, that you is a, is a true representation of yourself and uh, i i hope that that uh, that comes across whenever anybody meets me at an event um dude I, I would say it's coming across in spades so well you know i don't want anybody to ever you know come see me at a show and and not leave with a good experience or, or a smile on their face because yeah. Uh, I used to be on that side of the team. You know, I was a fan first. I went to shows. Um, you know, it's it's hilarious. I'll bring this up very quickly. But uh, this weekend, or this past weekend, while I was in Tennessee, I, I, another guest of the show was James Obar, who okay. um, I was having, I was telling a story at my table uh, about him, ironically enough, uh, to, to other fans and, and my experience with him about a decade ago in, in when I, when I met him at a tiny little show in Texas in the Richardson Convention Center. It was like in this hallway corridor, if you will. And uh, I was describing to, to those people that were at my table how, how wonderful of an individual he was uh, to me in, in that very first interaction. Um, because I, I wasn't very aware of how the whole convention aspects work or how mm -hmm. sketches work or or what the process was in terms of pricing or, or any of those sorts of things. Oh, I was yeah, just a, yeah, yeah, I was just a fan walking around, uh, you know, with a big, probably goofy smile on my face, uh, <laughs> trying, trying to soak up all of it like a sponge. Yep. And uh, I'm, I'm about midway in the story uh, <laughs> when James uh, comes walking up <laughs> to my table and and uh he's like i hope you're not talking about me or if you are it's not one of them I, I was at least nice in the story and i was like <laughs> oh absolutely and so he stuck around uh to listen to the to the other half of the story as oh, i was cool. still telling it and uh he remembered every bit of it oh, and uh it was so funny because i i was i, I was so uh, stupid, <laughs> for lack of a better term, uh, uh, back then about how everything worked. I mean, I, when I read The Crow, uh, it was one of the, the, the main reasons I wanted to become an inker, uh, among uh, others, but that, that was certainly one major influence. And the reason being was the whole book was in black and white. Mm -hmm. And so all you had was this like very visceral uh, line work to look at throughout the entire you know, I, I picked up the trade paperback, so I had the whole story when I was when I read it, and I was like, "Holy cow, this is this is intense and and just so energetic and dynamic." Uh, I want, how did he do that? Or mm -hmm. I, did, I certainly would like to do that. And in particular, there was this double page splash um, in, inside the, the about midway point of the story, and it had uh, the crow uh, standing in front of this burning. Uh, house with holding yep. two two shotguns with a cat yep. on his shoulder, and so it's a very it's a very iconic uh, double page splash. Yep. And so as the the story uh, goes longer here, um, I walked up to James mm -hmm. uh, at this show, uh, and I I explained all this to him how awesome it was, and I I wanted him to recreate it. <laughs> 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 At, at the show oh, nice. and, and uh you know i i didn't know back then like you want me to do what you want me to recreate a double page splash <laughs> of like one of the most detailed 
a series of, of pages in that entire, you know, book <laughs> at, at an event. Uh, and, and on top of that, I think I only had a one day pass. Like I, I was all, I was only there for the day. And I, you know, an hour? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, like like that was my concept. Like, I was so misinformed uh, mm -hmm. back then that I, I I thought, you know, okay, so I, I walk around for a couple more hours, be like, you know, 50, 60 bucks or something, come back and they're they're feeling like a really cool, you know, piece of art waiting for me. And uh, you know, he was he he could have taken it in so many different directions uh, had he mm -hmm. wanted to. And uh, instead, he he asked me, you know, how that what what I had in my wallet. Basically, he was like, "Oh, what what do you got?" Uh, and I I mean, I don't remember the the exact number, but it wasn't much. Let me put it that mm -hmm. way. Um, I, I, at that time, I think I was in my first year in college and rocking the ramen as, uh, yep. as most people do. Yep. And, do. um, he, uh, he told me if I would, if I got a, 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 another ticket to come back mm -hmm. the next day and I, and I gave him what I had that he would, he would do it on, you know, a board landscape. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and he, he would, he would make it for me. And, uh, he was so kind about the whole thing. Like, I don't think, I, I don't know how I would react if I had been in his position, like yeah. knowing how much time it takes now, obviously, Wait, are you uh, as, as, a, as a pro, like I probably, yeah, I, I don't know if I would have been nearly as gracious uh, at the time. And uh, I came back the following day and sure enough, he had almost, you know, Really? Line, line for line, yeah. Recreated the uh, recreated the piece for me, and and I was I was so tickled by the the entire experience that it was experiences like those and a couple of others that I had with uh, some industry veterans really early on before I even uh, broke into to comics as, as a pro that uh, I really wanted to embody, um, and so you know nowadays uh, especially I. I remember stupid old young me with the goofy mm -hmm. grin, and I I want to make sure that the that same feeling that I had back then when he did that for me, I, I would you know hopefully uh, be able to do for for other people who come and see yeah. me today, and and it's those types of things that I think help shape um, how you approach uh, individuals and people because. You, you don't know. I mean, like I, I didn't know, and I'm in, I'm in comics now, obviously, yeah. and and I just, I, I, sometimes you're just not educated in how that process works, um, so you can't ever hold it against anybody or, or you know, think uh, come off as being rude in, in your response, because it, it might just be an honest honest mistake, and so it's something that that I I've really taken to heart over the years, and. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's definitely I think has come out uh, when I deal with other people at, at events and shows because I just want people to feel uh, as respected as as I would want to. Oh, totally, dude, totally. Uh, I understand completely. Um, one one last question. I got a couple customer qu or a couple chat questions real quick. But one question for me is: when you started doing pro work, right? When what was the first moment you had with a customer that like you're like dude that's pretty cool like uh i'm glad i'm doing this now like you know what what was that first experience you had with the customer interaction you know well, like memorable experience yeah. mm -hmm. so, um well I, I i tell you one thing the first couple of years that that i was kind of going around doing shows i i didn't really know what the heck I was doing. Very similarly to how I, <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing when I approached James that very first time. Yeah. Um, and so I think at the first couple shows I ever did, I literally had, I had one print and a, a, a pad of Strathmore uh, paper and mm -hmm. some, some a pencil and some, you know, inking materials and, and, and that was it. Maybe a sign with my name on it. And I just, you know, based off of previous experiences walking around, because all I ever wanted uh, as a fan was original art, you know, yeah. like sketches and things. So I, I, you know, it was the way I saw it was, okay, so I'm going to sit here and I'm going to be sketching. <laughs> and mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's all I brought. And so, um, 
I, it took me a while to understand that there was this whole other element of it, of like, you know, Prince and, mm -hmm. and trying to appeal to a, a wider fan base. And, and how do you go about doing that in terms of a marketing perspective? Yeah. Like, how do you make it more um, while on a show floor? And, and that all came with time. But I think that the, the more memorable experiences that I had, at least early on, um, which I believe is what your question was, uh, was when I had kids, um, mm -hmm. you know, the younger audience come up and just get really excited uh, about something they saw or uh, when I signed the, the print and they had a big grin and they would yep. ask for a picture or something or, yep. or something like that. And, uh, you know, if you go back far enough, I'm, I'm sure you'll see a bunch of pictures of you know me with the you know these these folks that came by and uh i think we just we're all excited together because i was excited that there was that they liked it enough to want it you know mm -hmm. <laughs> to actually spend money on it and uh i think they were just excited for the fact that i was i was excited and so it had had this kind of dual element uh to it and I remember that even at some of the smaller shows, the, the really, but believe it or not, the smaller events I tend to enjoy more because you have mm -hmm. more of that one-on-one -on -one kind of yeah, interaction. Yeah, the, the bigger shows, like you, you tend yeah, to it feels like you're crowded. you're in a cattle call line, yep. and it's like a conveyor belt system where you're just you're just trying to accommodate as many people as possible, Correct, yeah. and they're not really getting a, a, an experience, you know? It's yep. very much like a checkout line at a store, mm -hmm. and and, I, and you don't want that, or at least I don't, you know? I can't speak for everybody else, but I very much enjoy talking, as I'm sure you can tell right here, <laughs> and uh, I, yeah, I like I like communicating and yeah. interacting and, and wanting to, to share uh, in, in some way a, a positive experience that they can leave with. That's awesome. Um, man. That's so awesome. I think those those are the memorable ones for me. Oh. Uh, are the ones where you know everybody's so excited, and in turn it makes me excited, and, and uh, yeah, it just builds up the the entire process a little. Mm -hmm. bit more did you everybody. start? Did you uh, start out like your first prints? Were they all like fan art stuff? Like uh, uh, yeah, yeah, they absolutely were. I think every I artist that, starts out that way a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and and I. Um, again, I, I, I didn't quite know how the whole process worked. So yeah. some of some of that stuff, um, you know, I, there's no way I would do anything like that now mm -hmm. in my career, now that I understand the, the elements of it. Yeah. Uh, but I got real lucky, um, really, really early on, um, a gentleman named Steve Irwin, who was the original test stroke, the Terminator artist for DC yeah. back okay. in the early nineties. Uh, back when Mike Zek was doing the covers, he was kind enough to not only give me um, some pages from this Citizen of the Galaxy uh, graphic novel that he was working on to do, like, to practice on uh, doing inks, uh, but he also uh, allowed me to uh, take some Deathstroke uh, compositions at the time mm -hmm. uh, and uh, do my inks on them and then get them professionally colored and and turned into prints and and it was it was really awesome to have you know that kind of uh, an established pro like that be okay and 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 really help facilitate that process so that it wasn't you know solely just fan art or anything it was actually a deathstroke composition by a deathstroke artist with a pro level team you yeah. know creating an entire composition for you the audience as opposed to just you know a, a complete fan art uh piece and mm -hmm. to this day i would say at least um 60 to 70 percent of my print portfolio if not more is um either published covers uh that i've done or uh you know interior pinups from some of the books uh that i've had the pleasure of being a part of so they're, they're all uh, mainly compositions from those things. Now, don't get me wrong. There's still, you know, the the personal uh, <laughs> uh, good pieces that I and that I enjoy uh, in there as well. But uh, a good vast majority of it is uh, is that of published work, um, as opposed to just you know a wall of fan art. Yeah. 
A uh, couple of quick questions from the chat. Pope Fire sure. asking me, uh, ask him what his favorite Teen Titan is. Hmm. Um, I already know her answer. Hey, so, so <laughs> the Slade doesn't count. Then I take it because <laughs> it's my favorite anti-hero, just in general, is Deathstroke, <laughs> and, and it could have that could play a little bit into into why I, I really appreciated Steve's help as much as he did. Um, but in terms of the, the Titans themselves, um, I was always a fan of Robin. <laughs> Robin? Believe it or not, yeah, believe it or not. I always thought that he got such a bad rep when he was with Batman. <laughs> that, 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 you know, the fact that he could kind of, play, you know, fill the role of that batman yeah, he can lead yeah, yeah, position. I was like, well, good for him. You know, he's been, he's been like the sidekick for so long. At least now he's got his own kind of like, uh, you know, leadership type mm -hmm. role and and I, I really enjoyed that at least for for, for that uh, Justin was asking what would your dream job in comics be I think uh, we pretty much went over that already you know <laughs> yeah I would I would say um, like dream project it's yeah let's be a dream change, project yeah. yeah change change the, the, the role of the, uh, the question a little yeah. bit. Um, I was always a really really big watchman fan. Oh, okay. Um, so anything involving Watchmen, uh, I think would be the, the, the dream project, even though it's not, you know, everybody says, oh, I want to work on Batman or I want to work on, you know, whomever. Um, that, those are all great. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, for me, I, I, I just really enjoyed Watchmen, uh, growing up. So I think that would be anything dealing with those characters would be really cool. Cool. Uh, I'm actually posting the link right now. I got it up on the screen. Uh, and War Corns. War Corns. Combat yeah. Unicorns for so, Well, you're doing some of the covers for it, so uh, I'm going to post that in the chat real quick. Because I want I want people, like, if they want to get a hold of you or get some artwork from you, where they can get it from. So Yeah, this is this is a really cool new project uh, that I'm getting to work on with Garrett Gunn, um, mm -hmm. who I got to also do. Uh, covers for for his other series called Franklin and Ghost. Okay, and uh, they, they're they're all in the same universe. This is just a, a different aspect of that uh, ever growing universe that he's building. And um, <laughs> each one of the warcorns or these military unicorns, if you will, are uh, you know a, a represent a different branch of the military. <laughs> Um, Battle really ready and always horny. Oh that. yeah, oh yeah. You'll see some really funny stuff when you <laughs> scroll through the campaign in there. Um, you know, and Garrett's fantastic. He's always treated me with the utmost respect, and and he he brings me on to uh, to work on on a lot of his projects. And I think okay. uh, we have a really good working relationship uh, together as a result. But this particular um, series is just so so funny to me it's, it's very very colorful um it's it is, got these yeah, very colorful, yeah, yeah very comedic type characters and and again it has all the tropes that you would find when you think of a particular individual from a particular military branch so yeah. garrett, garrett, garrett is a veteran and uh, i was uh, i actually grew up on multiple military bases my father okay. was in uh, the military for for 20 years and so um I, I thought it was hilarious and uh you know it's got definitely people with uh, you know military backgrounds uh associated with it and yeah. so I, I i hope that uh the audience finds it as equally amusing as we do um so <laughs> and, the covers you did that's on the screen right now correct yeah, that's that's one of them. It was a My Little Pony uh, homage. If you're familiar with the My Little Pony oh, totally poster, right. um, that that was an homage to that. And then I also did did the main cover, which I believe is right uh, a little further underneath that. There that it one is. right there yeah. um, that you guys saw a little earlier when he had my Instagram up. The line work mm -hmm. that's what it turned out all colored up by uh, by Tommy Shelton, who uh, that's cool. came in and. and Laid in the colors, so it's 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 a super fun project. There's a lot of really uh, cool things attached to it, and um, it's something that you will see continuing on down the line. It's not just like a one shot. Um, it's something that is going to keep 
uh, hopefully building steam and, and tying into the, the Franklin and Ghost uh, series as well. How so, many uh, pages is this? Is this a... Uh, let's see here. It's a, uh, it's a full story. Um, is this 22? Yeah, I think it's... Yeah, it might be longer. He tends to do uh, slightly oversized issues. Um, because the Franklin and Ghost series books, they were in volumes. Um, so the covers that okay. I did were, were for volume two and volume three, and then I'm doing an individual, uh, I did an individual floppy, uh, cover for issue one. Um, gotcha. so they, they usually come in a more volume, uh, type format. And I would imagine that this, this particular book will be, will be similar as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, man. Um, I know you have a, a deadline today, and I don't want to keep you too much longer. Uh, we're already over what we already talked about, but, uh, dude, thank you for coming out today. Oh, so, no, absolutely. Yeah. If, as long as we covered everybody's questions in there, I, I don't want to leave anybody feeling too left out. No, no, I, I think it's fine. If they do, they'll put them in chat or whatever and stuff like that, or uh, in, the, in the comment section after the video, and maybe I can forward them to you or something like that uh, later on, but... Um, Jeremy yeah, and, and they're certainly welcome to, to reach out and, yeah. and, and find me and follow me on uh, definitely. I, I social posted media all your platforms links. as well. I have them in the comments section below, so uh, definitely check out Jeremy's stuff. Uh, he's a great dude. And honestly, man, getting to know you this last you know, 45 minutes to an hour, uh, dude, you're, you're up there on my list for pros right now, dude. You're you're you're, you're quality dude your quality well I, I i appreciate the kind words and uh yeah definitely keep keep track and and an eye out for some of these uh new projects that i got coming out all the way through the the remainder of this year um definitely you, know, you yeah. got the you got the new lady death uh kickstarter coming in august cool. um which i i had the pleasure of inking a cover on for that and then uh, there's a couple, uh, usually about two or three covers coming out every month uh, that cool. I have something to do with. Uh, Maybe we can have you on again, too, later this year and see what your projects are going and how they're looking and everything like that. So, Yeah, anyway. absolutely. Nice, dude. Well, well thanks Jerry, again. Yeah. yeah, dude. Thanks for your time. Hang out for a second while I wind everything down. Uh, remember, guys, check out Jeremy Clark Art on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, all there. Also, um, Support War Corns on Kickstarter right now. Link is in the chat. So please uh, do that for him. He's a great guy. He deserves your support. Anyways, uh, thanks, guys. God bless. Uh, peace.